Welcome back to White Knight. Let's continue to explore this rather large room. In the last episode, I put one of my logs in the fire, but what I didn't realize is that the other log that I had on me did not actually go in there as well. So, I thought I didn't have enough wood before, but maybe I do. Let's see if two is enough. Just needed a match. Alright, excellent. Now, what does this allow me to do? Is there a button here? What is this? An African mask? One of the Vespers traveled a lot, it seems. Piles of books about piano music composition. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what this actually allows me to do. I mean, it's comforting, but it doesn't seem particularly useful. Hmm. Music was playing an important part in the Vesper's life. Hmm. It was the Earth, weirdly located at the center of the solar system. Interesting. Will it relock if I move it back? Nope. Alright, looks like that was it. I guess that's what the fire is for. Another vision. Another Mayan symbol. That one was the moon. Like a flash of light in my mind, I saw that Mayan vision of Earth. This picture appeared to me as an esoteric symbol of Saturn. Couple buttons. I had a vision. It was a Mayan symbol of the sun. Hmm. Do I have to press these in a certain order? What do these do? So obviously there's a certain combination these need to be in. It looks like there's not too many um, combinations either. Yeah, it looks like there's two rings that rotate. Each ring has maybe four positions. I could probably just brute force it. Not that I'd want to, but uh, let's do one more press. Let's check the rest of the room first. I don't think I really checked anything out in this room. I think I just spent long enough in here to basically turn on the fire and get a save point. Oh, I can actually, like, do stuff with each one, huh? Wouldn't open like this. Hmm. Well, some of these are too high up. Actually, that seems to be the only one that's actually openable. So maybe I need to rotate it into the light? Now, is that part of the inner ring or the outer ring? Oh, there we go. I think that's... Yeah, there we go. Should do it? Yep, this one right here. Bingo! The moon opened. I was looking forward to see what was inside. Something small fell from the pages in a metallic whisper. Ooh, a key. From Selena to William. Lost letter. My dear William, 
Ever since I was a little girl, music has been living inside my head. I have been singing for my father and mother, friends, orchestra, an audience always asking for more, and it was my way of showing how much I love them. Then life took it all back and my voice became just a tool so I could survive in that backwater black lake. Enough to buy myself some drinks and forget about all this. This music box I gave you is a voice trapped in a cage. It is my voice, and I give it to you. I want you to remember how you gave me my inner voice back. You opened that box with a piece of music you wrote for me. The Serenade to a Moon Girl is the most beautiful declaration of love ever made to me. I will sing for you, so you can escape the shadows of that evil house where you live. I want this world to know you. I kiss you dearly. Opened that box with a piece of music you wrote for me, the serenade to a moon girl. He was too small to open a door, a box rather. Hmm, have I seen a box that needs a key? Uh, yes? That was a long time ago. Is that for the box all the way downstairs? Like, right near the beginning of the game? It might be, because I never opened that, did I? Yeah, that's the only box I can think of. I, I think it might actually be for that. Well, let's take a look around the rest of this room first, of course. William Vesper, the prodigal son, carrying the family burden. Something was missing, Selena's sheet. I guess that's probably what's inside of the box. From William to Selena, first letter. Dear Selena, I want to thank you again for the music box. I displayed it prominently in the living room. I imprinted its sweet little melody inside my head so I can hear it in my dreams. I can then see you in my dreams, and for someone who doesn't sleep much, your night visits are a blessing. You are the talisman that protects me from these nightmares. You said that the serenade for a moon girl I wrote for you saved you. I can't believe you were about to take your own life. If my art, the same art I thought pointless, has that effect on you, then I will keep writing for you, to keep you alive, and make your life better. I place the sheet music in the safety of the music box. That way, our, voice, our voices can still sing together every time the night is falling. William Vesper's Diary, Excerpt 11, March 24th, 1926. My fingers hurt. I intensified my training. Exhausted. Lizit. I don't think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Chopin. I think that is kind of how it's pronounced. Brahms. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. The third concerto has become a routine, after Mother tortured me with that piece of music for years. Now I play it with automatic ease. Every key I press is like a knife I stick in her belly. When the technique bores me, I just improvise, and every time, a jazz comes back at me. I play for an imaginary lover, a woman who came from the sky. My fingers are running over the keyboard like fireflies, moving from day to night. I know Luna is listening to me, because she can hear everything. I notice that she reacts to certain variations in my playing. Her radiance changes depending on the rhythm of my fingers. It is like a dance. Alignment of the planets. Had been read recently. Selena toured in 15 California cities in 1936.
Selena and the Frozen Suns, her fourth album. She was a star. Gotta be something on the table. From Selena to William, excerpt 6. I record a few records between January and September 1936. Morning Shadows and Snowborn, The One I Gave You, and Harlem Moon, Live at the Cotton Club. The press is enthusiastic. I compose easily. I meet lots of people, reporters, fashionable persons. It is a dream for me, but Jim's label remains weak. Competition is tough, and the mobsters hate him for refusing to bow down. Especially Melanie St. Clair, nicknamed Lady. The lady who is controlling the district. Jim was raised by a violent father, as testif testified by the scars on his back and arms. He hates power enforced by violence. That infuriates him so much that he doesn't realize who he is confronting anymore. The only person he sees in such cases is his father. The man he still faces in his dreams. But this is not a dream. And it's not fighting a single man. And that's when I tell him something that will change everything. I'm pregnant. She's pregnant. I'm trying to fit that into what I've seen. Have I seen any signs of her being pregnant? Any signs of a kid? Not that I can think of. Did she die before the kid was born? Ooh, there's a camera. Come here. I always feared you. Your fingers on the keys like spiders. That is a creepy freaking image. Continue to see her. Yep, continuously jumping off. That is not pleasant. Oh, it looks like it's uh, another song. Yes, I'm not going to read this because it's meant to be sung and I have no idea what the melody is. But you can go ahead and read it if you want. Read it along with me. Selena was looking for rest. I had to help her and stop her agony. Okay, so I guess I should go downstairs? Oh, hold on. Did I read this? Mm, I don't think so. No, I didn't. William Vesper's Diary, Excerpt 22. September 17th, 1923. I ordered some rare recordings of Jelly Roll Morton, the original Dixieland jazz, jazz band? Uh, Louis Armstrong and his Hot Five, Bessie Smith, Fats Waller, the Fletcher Henderson Orchestra, Duke Ellington. Names that have been sticking in my head since I listened to these jazz records with my father, as I was sitting on his lap. I would love to tell him how much of an influence he has had on my life. Not only because the music made me more human, but also because he has given me the chance to play it. I have fulfilled my desire to be surrounded with musical artifacts. My chapel will be devoted to jazz, to light. Uh, 
Uh, I tried to press this before, didn't I? Yeah, it wasn't working. Alright, I think I should save the game. Suppose it's time to go use that key, but first let's make sure that I've explored everything up here. So I'm finished with this room, but what's out here? This is back to the hallway, right? I think that there's a spirit somewhere close. It's been a little while since I've played, so I've kind of lost my place. I, I know I went down here before. Yeah, I've already been in here, right? I think. My god, that fucking nasty noise. Is she close, or is that just... Ambient nasty noise. Oh, no, she's there. Alright. Oh god. Oh! Where have I gone? I don't think I should be here. Alright, I have apparently not been there. Let's not go there. Let's never go there. Maybe I have to go there. So this is where I came from. Yes, 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 yes. I think I came from inside that doorway. Uh, have I tried to open this? What, what's in here? Hello? Oh god, she's behind me. Let's shut the door, shall we? Yeah. I don't believe I've been in here. No, I haven't. Map of the second floor. Excellent. Check that in a second. The smell of the woods outside was an unbearable temptation. I just heard some really weird wet noises. Letter from Dr. Rosenthal. Dear Margaret, I cannot come every day to treat your husband's seizures. As I told you, they are unavoidable at this stage of the disease, and they will get worse. I fully understand your worries, considering the responsibilities of your husband in the Vesper business, which is why I urge you to get ready for the worst. Henry refuses to be sent to hospital. Enjoying his family and his home is part of his last will. Let me clear all doubts once and for all. Syphilis is not a hereditary condition passed on through genes, but from a mother to child through the placental barrier. In other words, it doesn't cross generations. Syphilis killed your father, but you are healthy and sound. Your son is healthy and sound as well. This idea of inherited congenital dementia is an obsession, an intellectual construct, nothing more. You are obviously exhausted. You should take some rest. Inherited congenital dementia. So she was worried about his... About his, uh, Henry's... I guess, his... Well, she hated Henry, and was worried that Henry would pass on his... I guess, patheticness, if you want to call it that, to her son. I think that's what she was worried about. The idea of inherited congenital dementia. She was worried about him, Henry, passing on his bad genes. And I guess the son getting it? That's what it sounds like. The toilets were out of commission, but the owner didn't seem to mind. I don't think spirits need to go to the bathroom. Alright, let's take a look at the map real quick. If I can remember how to open it, there we go. Alright, um, where am I? I'm somewhere off the hallway, I think? Mmm... If you look at the left side of the map, bottom left... So there's a room in the very bottom left, and then if you go one room up and then one more room up, you're onto that very narrow room. I think that's where I'm at right now. The narrow room on the left side. The smallest one. If that is true, then the next door further up in the hallway should be quite large. 
Oh! Okay, she's right fucking there. Have I been in here? I don't even remember going in here. Oh, shit. I don't think I have been. Uh... Can I light this candle? Or is it dead? All the candles in here had burnt out long ago. I don't, I don't want to be in here. What the fuck? I really am running out of matches. Hold on, there's something here. <laughs> Great, I get to read this while listening to the sounds of a... A freaking horde of flies. Margaret's Diary, excerpt 15, September 15th, 1911. Henry firmly dug his fingers in my wrists. I couldn't move, and I saw God with a sword bearing a steel star. Fear left me, and I started walking away, dragging Henry out of the bed. He fell to the ground and his head hit a vase. As he was moaning and trying to keep blood from flowing from his open head, I talked to the shadow in him. You think you can scare me? I don't fear you anymore. If you think you have a place in this family, I'll disappoint you. Henry, you can have him. But you'll never have William. Henry started crying. His eyes rolling as he was calling for his mother. God, how disgusting a madman looks. Dr. Rosenthal diagnosed aggravated syphilis. Contracted God knows where. I wasn't surprised. He told me to prepare myself for the worst, that he would have other attacks. It doesn't matter. I care only about the future, about William. He can still be saved, and with him, the dignity of this house. This is my mission. I will give it all. Souvenirs from trips to African countries. Creatures from unknown origins celebrate William's seventh birthday. It's always a face carved out or something out of these pictures. Or ripped. The moon was still there outside. It would never abandon us. Margaret's Diary, Excerpt 16, June 3rd, 1913. I haven't entered his room since the first attack. Today, I went to visit Henry after my prayer. I expected to find him broken down, wrapped in the stench of death. On the opposite, he looked peaceful, and the room was clean. The servants were taking care of him like a child. When I asked him how he felt, he laughed. You are a dark sun, Margaret. You being here doesn't bode well. I offered him to pray with me, to share what he had on his heart. He answered, You can't share anything with a locked chest. God is open for you, I told him. I'm only his vessel. He started reciting the Bible. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. Then he added, that is what the world is to me, now. It also says that the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. I tried. He laughed. You who are filled with his Spirit every day, look at you, and tell me it's not poisoned. I left him. His soul is dead. His body will soon follow. Collection of tiny children cars protected behind the glass. I don't think I want to go towards the bed, but uh, I guess I should. A child drawing with the word dad. That body was Henry Vespers. So he did die at home. Oh 
shit. She's right there. But she ain't moving, so I'm not moving either. Alright. <clears throat> Let's read this, <laughs> this note here and try not to freak out. Uh, Henry Vesper, last note, June 1913. This is June, but I can't tell which day it is. I'm not only losing my mind, I'm losing my memory as well. My father left me two things. One of the biggest companies in Boston, and this disease that corrupts my blood, weakens me, and keeps me away from my family. When I come out of those manic episodes, I'm feeling empty, exhausted, and convinced that it is only a short break before the next one. What really breaks my heart is that William sees me in this state, despite all my efforts to spare him the worst of it. His affection for me hasn't changed, and I love him even more for that. As for Margaret, she finds me disgusting and makes no effort to hide it from others. She's not a wife, she's not a mother, she's a wolf only waiting to tear you to pieces the moment you fall to your knees. I'll fight to the end. Just to show her. Bravery is not the result of a strict education, nor the legacy of a long-lost glorious past. Bravery is facing hardships while remaining true to yourself. And I'm not lacking in that matter. I hope William figured it, figured it as well. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, Henry Vesper's stare was soft and caring. Yeah, let's not look at that. Um, so am I just gonna run past her, or uh? Oh, I already read this. All right. Um, <clears throat> three, two, one, go. Don't stumble. Run. What the? I think I was pressing the wrong button. Oh shit, I just realized I was pressing the wrong button to sprint. I was pressing the match button, not the sprint button. Oh no. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, let's try this again. So if I walk over here, yep, she'll pop up. Alright, and I heard the door close and we run. Alright, looks like if you don't get near her, she doesn't chase you. Good. Of course, there's probably like 20 of her out in the hallway, of course. Whoa! Go! Jesus! Holy shit, I didn't, didn't think she was still chasing me. She's gone, right? I don't think she'll follow me. No. Oh, we're good, we're good. Alrighty. So yeah, I believe it's a music box downstairs. I'm sure this button still doesn't work to turn on the light. Of course not. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, so back to the map. I'm just curious if I visited every room. So the three on the left, yes. Actually, the four on the left, yes, I believe. Big ones on the right, I think so. I think that's it. For the most part, except for the really creepy place where I ran really quickly and there was like 50 ghosts and then I ran away. I think I still haven't gone there. Um, I need to get downstairs. Which is no big deal. It's like a semi-open world. I need to go get some more matches from the kitchen. I'm actually not going to take these. I want to resupply the kitchen because there's still like 30 matches left there or something. So let's go back to the kitchen and then let's go back to the main room. Like, uh, not, not the main room, the beginning room. Because that, I believe, is where the box is that I need to go. In the light. It's good. Kitchen's this way. Unless. Oh. Is it relocked? Okay. Well, so much for that. Alright, we're here at the safety. Safety of this main lit room. Might as well go get the music box right now. 
I was thinking I should get the music box before saving, but I realized there's actually a save point here. These lights seem more unreliable than they were before. And they were never very reliable to begin with. Alright, so I'm assuming the key is for this box, right? Mm-hmm. Should have the music sheet, I think. Sheet music for piano, Whispers of the Moon by William Vesper. Nice piece of music. Uh, I just heard the door close. Yep. Okay, there's a bunch of spirits. Let me guess, this door's locked. Of course it is. All right, we're going this way. I was stuck in an animation! That's lame. Alright, well at least my save is from right here. Okay, there's a bunch of them. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a- oh, there's- what? It's hard to see where they are. Wait, did I not take the sheet music? Oh, I didn't. That's why uh, nothing happened. It's like, hmm, this seems too easy. The lights haven't gone out. back, go into the kitchen. Hope she's not in the kitchen. She is in the fucking kitchen. Keep running. No! Don't hit the... Oh my god. Okay, this is mildly aggravating. Thankfully my save point is right here, but it's hard to see where they are. And with the fixed camera angles, it makes it a little bit difficult. It's, it's really easy to run into stuff. There's even one near me. Well, I mean, it's like five feet away, but okay. Unfortunately, they kind of clumped together there. Yeah, I think this is meant to be scary, but it's not scary, it's just annoying. It's just really annoying.
like there's nothing I can do here. It's like if they're in the wrong place, I, I just I can't go around them. And it doesn't help that it's fairly slow to actually turn around. So if you find you're running right into one, turning around can take a second or two. Okay, I saw you going over to that direction. So I'm safe to go here? No? Alright, you're not gonna let me through? Can't go that way. Can't go that way. Well, maybe I can. Okay. I think I just need to go straight this way to begin with. Oh, come on. Alright, they're not following. So, out into the hallway, which it looks like it's broken open. And then we go this way to go upstairs? Okay, thank God. Jesus. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and save my game right now. Just so I never have to go through that again. Unfortunately, it is gonna leave me leave me with four matches left. I'm kind of running out of matches, actually. The only good source I had left was in the kitchen, and it looks like those might be gone. Or at least unobtainable. Because of the ghosts. Alright, I know there's a bunch of her out here. I need to go all the way to the end of the hallway. Okay, hi. Alright, that's great. Okay. Is there another doorway out of here? I might have to go around or something. Do I have to go around? Can I go back into Margaret's room through here? No, I can't. How do I avoid her? She's kind of taking up the entire hallway. Okay, she gone? I'm just gonna go slowly. I think I need to wait for her to go by, actually. Probably, yeah, go into a side room and wait for her to go by? Yeah, let's wait a second. Uh, is she gonna go by? No? Did she already go by? No, she's still here. I know I've seen her go by before. I'm gonna run out of freaking matches if I stay here. Oh, Jesus. We good? I think we're good. Okay, we're good. What? Son of a fucking bitch. Alright, she's right there. Oh, we're good. Is this not the door? Shit, I'm kind of forgetting where I just went to before. You know, the place with the piano?
I think it's further down the hallway, to the side. Maybe? And she just went by. What about in here? Oh, it's here. Okay. I'll take it. I saved her. Well, at least I saved her spirit from killing itself. Whatever that means. I want to go save, but I have almost no matches left. Where did she go? Out the door? She just kind of went in this general direction. Hmm. Well, I think I better say... Oh. Do you love me? The feeling of her hand. Her voice. Finally, I was able to exist for her. Though I couldn't have said if Selena was coming back to the living because of me. Or if she was the one taking me into her dream. She had become my guide, and I had become the witness of her story. I hate to use one of my last matches, but I really want to save. Because I think I should end this episode here. Oh, there's actually some matches on the chair right next to me. Thank God. Alright. Well, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And I'll be back soon. <laughs>